realized we weren't totally on here. Now we are. Okay. Four zero two. In camp, the hills of life, the Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night. The veil of woe is cast against the foe in vales below. Let all our strength be heard. Praise the trivia. We used to do a lot of that. Of course, where do we know that the sword is the word of God? What book is it? Anybody know? Uh, Hebrews? I think it's Hebrews 4.12, right? But, uh, either 4.12 or 4.16. I get those two mixed up. on the. Uh, there. How about his banner over us is love? Song of Solomon. You say, is that in the Bible? Oh yeah. His banner over us is love. Well, anyway, uh, keep looking, reading your Bible, studying it, and know that Jesus Christ has given us the victory over sin, death, and the devil. Anyone have anything that we need to tell besides the cards are out back there? Any, uh, uh, anything else? I did have a visit with Rob Fisher this week. That was very, went very well. So good to uh, see him again. I wasn't able to see Linda at that time. But, uh, so they're getting along well again, <laughs> as far as they can go in that, where they're at. So uh, Linda is over her ailment that she was being treated for. Let's see, who else? Beverly. Beverly's been doing quite well. Uh, she has falls occasionally, so just uh, 
you know, keep praying for one another and all these things. Anyone else that we need to know about? Her brother, we haven't heard anything about more on that, on his heart condition. He's I've been having problems with it again. Okay. So they're working at that. 229. 229 is one of those songs that uh, Catherine Hankey wrote. And you know the story probably about her and her friend that went, uh, they were good uh, Episcopal people that went to church every week and her folks and family, banker family and uh, they went walking, she went walking with a friend when they were young ladies and they were walking down the street and saw a tent meeting along the side and they turned into it and listened to it and said, we could be saved through Jesus Christ. And they got saved, both of them. Went home, told her folks, and told them all about it. And their dad and their mom got saved. He went and told the Episcopal priest, you know, and the priest said, wow, and, you, know, I, you know, I never looked at it that way. And we can have Jesus Christ, and, you know. And he got saved, and he preached the message to his church, and they had a great revival as the church just basically all turned to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, quite a story. And she wrote several hymns about telling that story, telling the story of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is one of them. Okay.
to have a song like this written, it helps you to understand. I mean, I can just see uh, people being saved, people saying, tell it to me again, just tell it to me again. Uh, we need to be ready to give our testimonies. We need to be able to tell people about what Jesus has done for us. Uh, listen, don't be ashamed. You, I, you know, that was one thing that I could do is talk. I couldn't face people when I was uh, through my early life, I just was a loner. I mean, I could work with the animals and be out on the farm, in the mountains, whatever. And I, that was wonderful. And I could praise God all day long at the top of my lungs. I could recite scripture and do those kind of things. But you put me in front of a group of people. Well, the Lord changed that. And so now I can stand here and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can tell people my testimony, I can tell people what God says, his testimony to mankind. And we need to be ready always to give an answer to anyone that asks you the hope of your life. What are you, what's your hope? Can you tell somebody about that? Well, if you're saved, you better be able to or else you better check out your salvation. Okay, but don't, uh, you know, I know we're all different. We all have different personalities and things. Uh, I, again, I can go back and I don't know how many, if, even in this church, if I've ever told the story about how a young preacher man, a missionary that was scared to death when he'd get behind the pulpit, he was raised in South Africa. He came from South Africa and, and uh, he was in this country and we got him as our preacher in the Coast Guard Chapel. The Coast Guard didn't have any, uh, any they didn't rate any chaplains. And so when they turned the Air Force Base in Cape Cod over to the Coast Guard, uh, the chapel went away. Well, we got a village and rural missions provided this young preacher to come and he took the pastorate there uh, for the Coast Guard. And he's the one that the Lord used in my life uh, to show me. He'd give me scripture verses all from the prophets and how the prophets say, oh no, Lord, not me, you know, uh, Samuel and, and the different ones are, uh, uh, Jeremiah and uh, Ezekiel, all them, they needed encouragement. They needed to know. God had to tell them, uh, it's okay because I'm going to take you and I'm going to use you and uh, you can do it. Don't worry about their faces. Several places in the Bible it talks about, listen, don't worry about their faces. I'm going to make your head harder than theirs. Amen. And so uh, through that and through this young man that uh, was in the pastorate there, the Lord had used him so that I can now stand in the grace of God and face people and tell them my testimony and tell them his word. Uh, and so it's uh, God gives you that opportunity. God gives you the, uh, the testimony if you're in Christ. You have a testimony. And uh, don't be ashamed of that. We have testimony times in church. We haven't had any here recently. But we need to keep giving testimonies. If you uh, have a testimony you want to give some, wait your hand. Hey, I want to tell you how I got saved. <laughs> so you want to tell? Yes. Okay. When I was, um, as I grew up, I heard the story all the time. I was a pastor's daughter, so I heard the story. Tell me the old, old story. And when I went to the same chapel, the pastor was this young man that he's talking about. And his message was very clear and very plain that I needed to make a decision, not because my dad, being a pastor, not holding on to his shirt tails, but to do it on my own and make my own decision. And I knew I wasn't living like a Christian should. I knew it. And I was a young mother. We had two children, I believe, at the time. And mm -hmm. um, poor Paul, <laughs> what he's been through with me already at that point. And um, <laughs> I just knew I needed to get saved because it was so plain that I was not a Christian. And I had a white knuckle experience, and then finally I just said, I'm going up there. 
Yeah. And the pastor's wife, bless her heart, was a beautiful um, vocalist. And she trained my voice as well, and we've been very close to each other. She just took me and just loved me through the plan of salvation. I realized I needed to make that commitment to the Lord as my Savior right then. And my life was different after that. It was Amen. And he can vouch for that. <laughs> it took a little while through some areas, but you know, that's the way it is. So our Christian walk isn't just completed at the moment you get saved, but you have to just keep trusting the Lord every day and read your Bible and pray and ask the Lord to guide you through it. And he's done he's been faithful even when I have it. No. Mark Margaret McLuhan yes, was Mark a lady that took the time to show, give her testimony and show how you can know Jesus Christ personally. And then we were both baptized in John's Pond uh, shortly after that. John's Pond is a big lake on Cape Cod and Massachusetts they're called ponds. And so it was a, a public place out there. We had a lot of people that came to see what was going on from the beaches and the boaters and the skiers and everything around there. And so that was what we did. Dick, did you have your hand up? Yes, I did. This might take a little bit. But anyway, testimony. A little bit or a big bit? A little bit or a big bit? Go big ahead. Bit. Go ahead. <laughs> what I'm going through right now with my memory loss and stuff like that, I, you know, a lot of times I try to talk and all stuff. It's still my mind, but I'm trying to talk about But when you get to talk about the testimony, how did I come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? I get it. All this other superfluous stuff like you got stuffed up in your head. I can remember I was raised in a Catholic home and very religious. But we, as I found out later on, I was religious but lost. You can be very religious but totally lost. If you're depending on a church or an affiliation to save you, you're going the wrong way. Anyway, when I, I, I got out of the house, I said, oh boy, I'm going into a, I went into a service. In a, really, it was another world. When I got off that train, it was just another <coughs> world. I thought, why did I do this? And I'm being uh, browbeat by some chief or whatever. You know. Anyway, as it went on and went to school and uh, got my rate and stuff like that, I was stationed out in the San Diego for a little while. And we didn't have a lot of money. We made $83 a month. I didn't have a lot. And that's what you had to live on. And I used to go to the city mission because you could get coffee and donuts there anyway. Yeah. You know? And they'd be on the street pulling you in. And I used to, I, I go to, the people would be on the streets, they started talking to me about the Lord. And that's the first time I kind of heard the gospel. But I, I kind of ignored it. But I keep on going back and back. But, well, I didn't get saved during that time, but I heard it. And I was accountable. If you hear it, you're accountable. You read a track, you got one thing you can do. Accept it or reject it. You reject it, we'll go on maybe God be gracious to you as he was to me. And my true testimony was when uh, my friend I worked with came up to me and he said, if you were to die today, are you were sure you're going to heaven? And I said, nobody can know that. Very cock. Nobody can know that. He said, give about three minutes, and I'll, uh, I'd like to talk to you. He said, well, go ahead. And all of a sudden, that, that was at work. I was a general like I am sitting, waiting for the bell to ring. And all of a sudden, he's talking to me, and the bell goes off. I said, whoa, good. You're going to get rid of this crackpot. You know, talking about religious things. He said, before you leave, I want to give you this track. Read it and see if you uh, see what you think. And it was, what is this salvation business? Now, I got a bunch of them made up right now. I don't even hand them out anymore. I don't know if I'm afraid to. I don't want people taking them and hand them out. But that was, that, that was my testimony on that track. And it, 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 so don't be afraid to do something like that for a person. You gotta, I mean, that's quite a question. If you were to die today, you sure go to heaven? And I says, no, nobody can know that. And he says, well, if you give me about three minutes, I'd like to talk to you. No, well, the 
bell went off, I got up, but I cracked by talking about spiritual things. <laughs> and uh, I read that track, and that touched me right where I was at. God says, I, I told you before, yep. but you're going to have to listen now. And I, and I did, and I paraphrased it so bad. I, I wish I, if I had the opportunity to get up in front of a church and talk, and everybody should really have a testimony. Don't come up and talk about God if you don't know God personally. It's a personal right. relationship. It's not a religious relationship. It's not because I go to church or how good I am or how good my wife is or anything. It's like if people do good works, that ain't going to get you to heaven. I mean, I think of their dad. He's got to be saved, I believe. And, uh, you know, because and he was a worker, but he thought flipping hamburger or chickens at a church dinner was good enough. You know, I, that's what I do. I can, uh, I do things like that. God's truly accepted. No, that's not how it works. The Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and God shall be saved. No other way. There's no other way. And when you come to that reality, God will give you boldness if you continue to uh, right. continue to preach. But I'll tell you what, the devil's been beating me up pretty bad. Yep. And uh, but I'm <laughs> still going to trust him. Because yep. I know for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm going to go to heaven. Not because of what I did, because of what Jesus did. Amen. And just one verse I, I memorized because they give you this uh, pastor, okay, who was give you, uh, told me to see how it looks in the clock. Uh, told me about memorizing a verse. And I, uh, the Apostle Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lived in me. And in the, in the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. And Lord, I don't bring a tear to your eye. Yep. You know, if we have a lot of preachers out there, we guess, dry eye, dry eye, you know, that, that's the greatest thing you can have is a salvation. And don't pass it up if you hear it. I went into, I went into the, all the, in San Diego, in the, uh, the big preachers on the, soapbox preachers, but they were given the gospel, mm -hmm. as that's what call them now. But I just, let it slide. It's only by the grace of God I am where I am now. And I can't wait till he comes back and see how many times I should have been dead because of my sin and the way my life was was bad. But now all I'm doing it for the last 47 years now or longer I've been looking for him to come. He said, how long have you been looking for him? Well, the minute I got saved, I've been looking for him. He ain't back yet, but he's on his way. Amen. Praise God for that. Don't be afraid. Are people going to doubt you? So what? Yep. So what? Keep preaching the gospel. Yep. And if you ever know where the gospel is, like in 1 Corinthians 15, the death, burial, and resurrection, <coughs> and you can show them. God can show them. Show them where it is. That's all I got. I mean, I, Amen. I, we can. We get, it seems like today we're given different parts of our testimony than what most people have given or seen, heard. And uh, it's uh, all part of it, the way the Lord works in our lives. And, and, uh, and uh, his, the fellow that gave him that track has been a good friend now of mine for over 20 years. <laughs> yeah, we hear from him pretty regularly now and then get a clip from from him, but uh, he's down in Tennessee now, yeah, is that where he was? Anyway, he's uh, took a church out in, uh, out in uh, Nebraska for a while, yeah, when his one daughter was out there. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, good to have people that aren't ashamed of the gospel of Christ, that aren't ashamed to uh, be re have you reject a track or have you reject their religiosity <laughs> uh, whatever that they they have and we uh, we just need to be faithful to the Lord and uh, 
See, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't rejecting Tom. He was rejecting the Lord. And that's what the whole thing's about. So, Any other testimonies? Yes? There's much to it. I try not to be too long. I know you want to come with your message. I, I grew up in a Lutheran church. Um, my mother particularly sent my, my next brother and I to Sunday school with a dime for the offering. And they were trying to stop and talk popsicles instead. But I remember all the wonderful Sunday school songs and so forth that, and wonderful teachers I had in the Lutheran church until I was 13. But at that time, they wanted me to take confirmation. And they were, and I realized that they were teaching me things that I didn't exactly believe in as true. For they taught that we live in the age of grace, so we're all going to heaven. Mm -hmm. And as I was babysitting my nieces and nephews, I, turned, I tuned into the Billy Graham crusade on TV. And at 13, I prayed with Billy Graham for me to have a personal relationship with Christ. Amen. I didn't grow until I was 16 when I first went to First Summit Church. And Pastor Louis Friend was just moving out. He was leaving. And he asked me if I was sure of my salvation. And I said, well, I hope so. And he said, well, you can know so. So he refreshed my prayer, um, seeking the Lord for salvation. And I remember leaving his parsonage that day and doing cartwheels in the backyard. <laughs> now, I couldn't do that now, of course. <laughs> um, I went home and told my mother, and she said, I knew I shouldn't have let you go to that church. <laughs> So I've had, you know, a lot of ups and downs, but I have declared Jeremiah 29 11 as my life verses that God has a plan. And whatever I've been through, He had a plan for good. And I can look back on many things and know that He had His hand on me throughout. I praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Doesn't make any difference what church you're in, it's where God is, okay? Where his word is. And uh, you go back in my testimony to the Lutheran church where I learned the scripture, I learned the songs, and I have a song that I'm going to be preaching on, I think, one of these days, that a song from the Lutheran church has been, I've been singing it every day this last week, that a song I learned when I was a little kid, and that it's just uh, one that is so from Phenomenal. The name of it is I Am Content. And we, it, we, I preached on that not recently, but some years ago I preached here about being content with such things you have. The Bible's very plain on it. <clears throat> but I was just thinking about uh, what, a, what a wonderful life you can have if you're just content with what the Lord gives you. Amen. Amen. And so uh, we might look at that here one of these days. What, let's go to 173 now and talk about the Word of God. Uh, the Word of God is like a garden, and we can uh, get all these lovely things out of it and out of the, the minds that it's like. So all these things, 173. <clears throat>
Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the time of testimonies, Lord. Thank you for the songs, these hymns that were written. Uh, Lord, we know the Bible's inspired. And many of these songs, Lord, you have moved people to write and the poems and things that they have, Lord, for your glory. And we thank you for them, Lord. Again, thank you for this day you've given us now. And uh, bless as we look at your word, give each one what they need for their heart, for their mind, Lord, this day from you. And we love you. Amen. 1 Samuel 27. 1 Samuel 27. Uh, we haven't been in that since the beginning of November. We have been in other areas of the Bible, but we were teaching through uh, 1 Samuel. And we've seen all the various things, the uh, conflicts that go on in families and with, uh, with the kingdoms that are established. Uh, we see how people can change. Saul was so humble when God called him to anoint him to be king, and yet he got puffed up with pride, and not only was he taller than, uh, than the rest of the heads and shoulders as a big man, he became